Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning on behalf of the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, and Commanding General, United States Army, Alaska, Major General Brian S. Eifler. Welcome to the 11th Airborne Division Activation Ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, America's Arctic Warriors, United States Army, Alaska, would like to recognize our distinguished guests for today's ceremony. Please hold your applause until the end. Senator Lisa Murkowski, United States Senator from Alaska. Senator and Mrs. Dan Sullivan, United States Senator from Alaska. Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Grinston. Mayor Bryce Ward, Fairbanks North Star Borough. Command Sergeant Major Scott Burzak, Senior Enlisted Advisor, United States Army Pacific. Lieutenant General James Rainey, Deputy Chief of Staff, G357, United States Army. Lieutenant General Xavier Brunson, Commanding General, First Corps. Command Sergeant Major Sean Carnes, Senior Enlisted Advisor, First Corps. Senator Scott Kawasaki, Alaska State Senator. Representative Bart Lebon, Alaska State Representative. Representative Mike Prax, Alaska State Representative. Brigadier General Louis Lapointe, Deputy Commanding General, Operations, USARAC. Brigadier General James Wilkins, Deputy Commanding General, National Guard, USARAC. Please give a round of applause for all of our distinguished guests. <laughs> Music today is provided by our very own United States Army Alaska 9th Army Band. The Color Guard is provided by the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division, under the direction of United States Army Alaska Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Vern B. Daly, Jr. Units participating in today's activation ceremony on the field are the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division, Arctic Wolves, commanded by Colonel Stephen Phillips and Command Sergeant Major Daniel Rose. The 17th Combat Support Sustainment Battalion, supporting the Arctic Warrior, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Becker and Command Sergeant Major Max Jean-Philippe. The Northern Warfare Training Center, Battle Cold, Conquer Mountains, commanded by Major Caleb Goebel and First Sergeant Jeremy Jones. Units participating in today's activation ceremony, but not on the field, are 125 Attack Reconnaissance Battalion, Arctic Attack, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Carlson and Command Sergeant Major Preston Ring. 152 General Support Aviation Battalion, Forged in Fire, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel John Collins and Command Sergeant Major James Liggins. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation given by USARAC Command Chaplain Colonel Masaki Nakazuno and the playing of the national anthem. The official party is comprised of the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, the Commander of United States Army Alaska, Major General Brian S. Eifler, Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston, and United States Army Alaska Command Sergeant Major Vern B. Daly, Jr. I invite us to come together in prayer for this momentous again, event. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you grace us now on this historic day of transformation as we welcome the recommencement of the angelic presence of the 11th Airborne Division. For you have given our leaders 
those in this great organization to across the Pacific and to our nation's highest offices, the realization to see and the understanding to know how to wisely bestow unanticipated gifts in answer to our nation's great challenges. Voices have cried out, ears have opened up, and with your help, our nation's strength and might have been assured. For you are a God who keeps each of us faithful and straight with a mindset that is clear and a wisdom set beyond the horizon and towards the eternal. In your incredible grace, you have inserted your presence into our lives, watching over us through our toughest challenges, guiding us through our greatest trials, and leading us into a victory that brings you glory. With your awesome power, you rule from the heavens and the skies, across the mountains, the seas, and the lands below. For you are a God of strength and honor and courage, who brings confidence to us in victory and in triumph. And when called to battle, you strengthen our arms and train our hands for war. Your spirit readies our hearts and stills our soul. And when we sleep, you are the God who watches over us and dwells with us to bring peace into our lives and into our world. With the words of the psalmist, we pray, ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, Ascribe to the Lord the glory, do his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord resounds over the waters. The glory of the Lord thunders over the seas. The voice of the Lord is powerful, full of majesty, for the Lord sits enthroned over the world. He sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May he bless his people with peace. And as we stand in honor of this advent of this new legacy, we hold fast with pride in our commitment to our country, to one another, as our nation's Arctic angels. Please be seated. This morning, General James C. McConville honors the exceptional contributions of the United States Army Alaska and its Arctic warriors. As part of this ceremony, Major General Brian S. Eifler and Command Sergeant Major da Vern Daly Jr. will uncase the Army's 11th Airborne Division colors. The ceremony of uncasing a unit's colors upon activation in a new capacity is deeply rooted in military tradition. 
When the cover is removed and the colors are unfurled, it signifies the acknowledgement of a unit's assumption of a new mission. The 11th Airborne Division was formally activated at Camp McCall, North Carolina on 25 February 1943, commanded by Major General Joseph M. Swing. Initial combat formations included the 511th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 187th, 188th Glider Infantry Regiments, 457th Parachute Field Artillery Battalion, and the 674th and 675th Glider Field Artillery Battalions. Between February and December of 1943, Major General Swing forged the unit into a combat-capable formation. The division's excellent performance in the North Carolina Knollwood maneuvers convinced the War Department of the value of division-sized airborne units. Major General Swing authored War Department Circular 113, which became the Bible for U.S. Army airborne operations. In early 1944, the 11th Airborne Division trained at Fort Polk, Louisiana, before deploying to New Guinea in the southwestern Pacific, where it completed its combat preparations. In November 1944, 11th Airborne Division landed unopposed at Leyte, Philippines, and began combat operations. It then destroyed two enemy divisions in jungle passes near Jaro and conducted several small-scale amphibious assaults synchronized with airborne assaults. In February 1945, 11th Airborne Division spearheaded the U.S. 6th Army's attack on Luzon, Philippines. It conducted an airborne assault on Tegayete Ridge and fought to help liberate Manila. On 23 February 1945, 11th Air Airborne Division executed a daring amphibious and airborne raid on a Japanese detention camp at Los Banos, Luzon, rescuing 2,147 Allied civilian internees. It was during this raid that a nun who was rescued commented that the soldiers descending in their parachutes looked like angels coming down from the heaven. This was, when one, this was one of several incidents that helped earn the 11th Airborne Division the nickname Angels. On 23 June 1945, 11th Airborne Division seized Apari Airfield in Luzon. This was the only U.S. airborne assault in the Pacific Theater that employed gliders and was the last of six airborne assaults conducted by the 11th Airborne Division during World War II. 11th Airborne Division then redeployed to Okinawa, then to mainland Japan, to be the vanguard of the post-war Japanese occupation forces. It remained in Japan until May 1949 when it relocated to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. In 1950, the 187th Glider Infantry Regiment and 674th Airborne Field Artillery Battalion transformed into the 187th Regimental Combat Team. It fought for two years in Korea where it participated in two airborne assaults. 11th Airborne Division deployed to Germany in early of 1956, then deactivated on 1 August 1958. It reactivated at Fort Campbell, Kentucky on 1 February 1963 and became the Air 11th Air Assault Division test to develop and refine air assault tactics and equipment for a new heli helicopter-borne army. On completion of that mission, 11th Air Assault Division activated on 29 June 1965. For their conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity, Upon, above and beyond the call of duty, two 11th Airborne Division soldiers were posthumously, posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for their valorous actions in the Philippine Islands in World War II. They are Private Elmer E. Fryer and Private First Class Manuel Perez, Jr. Activation of the 11th Airborne Division in Alaska provides an opportunity for this unit to extend its proud airborne legacy by serving as the premier platform around which the U.S. Army will regain Arctic dominance and sharpen its role as an innovator with a wide-range mission to defend U.S. interests both in Alaska and worldwide. At this time, Major General Eifler and Command Sergeant Major Daly will encase the division's colors, signifying the activation of the Army's 11th Airborne Division.
The 11th Airborne Division is hereby assigned to the United States Army Pacific Command. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, you will now witness the casing ceremony of the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division. The colors under which a military unit exists symbolize its very soul. The colors re record the unit's achievements and have been used by armies for centuries. In 17th century Europe, the colors led regiments into battle despite often heavy casualties suffered by the color bearers. To capture an enemy's colors was the highest achievement the victors could claim. Today, it represents a unit's heritage and carries special significance in military ceremony. The 1st Brigade of the 25th Infantry Division was constituted and organized in 1917 as Headquarters 167th Infantry Brigade and 84th Division. It converted and was redesignated in 1942 as the 84th Reconnaissance Troop, 84th Division. The 84th Infantry Division entered combat in Holland in November 1944 in response to the German counterattack in the Ardennes. The 84th was shifted to Belgium to help stop the German advance. The 84th crossed the River Ruhr and Rhine, advanced to the Elbe River, and linked up with Soviet forces on 2 May 1945. After World War II, the 84th Reconnaissance Troop was inactivated in 1946 and reactivated in 1947 as the 84th Reconnaissance Platoon, later company. The 84th Reconnaissance Company disbanded in 1959. The unit was reconstituted in the regular army as Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 167th Infantry Brigade. The brigade was designated as Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 1st Brigade, 25th Infantry Division, and activated on 26 August 1963 at Schofield Barracks. Arriving in Vietnam on 29 April 1966, the 1st Brigade was initially based at Chu Chi and participated in all 12 campaigns of the 25th Infantry Division, receiving a valorous unit award for Tay Ninh Province. The 1st Brigade departed Vietnam on 8 December 1970 and was stationed at Schofield Barracks from 1971 until it was reassigned to Fort Lewis, Washington in 1995. In early 2002, the 1st Brigade began its conversion from a light infantry brigade to a striker brigade. It, it achieved combat ready status in mid-2004 and began a one-year tour in Iraq in October of 2004. The 1st Brigade distinguished itself in the conduct of extensive combat operations against insurgent forces as well as stability initiatives in and around the city of Mosul. The brigade returned to Fort Lewis in 2005, and on 1 June 2006, the 1st Brigade Combat Team and its subordinate units were inactivated and their personnel and equipment were transferred to the 2nd Cavalry Regiment, Stryker. On 16 December 2006, the brigade was reactivated at Fort Wainwright, Alaska, using personnel and equipment from the inactivating 172nd Infantry Brigade, Stryker. In September 2008, the brigade began a 12-month tour of duty in Iraq, stationed in Diyala province as part of the Multinational Division North Task Force Lightning. From May 2011 to May 2012, the brigade deployed to Afghanistan, based in Kandahar province, and partnered with the Afghan 1st Brigade 205th Altal Corps, as well as Afghan police elements. The brigade later deployed to Iraq from September of 2019 to July of 2020 in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division Command Team, Colonel Phillips and Command Sergeant Major Rose will conduct the color casing ceremony, which symbolizes the inactivation of the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division, and activation of the 1st Brigade, 11th Airborne Division. The case colors of the 1st Striker Brigade will be stored and conserved by the Center for Military History in the event that the brigade is ever reactivated.
Upon completion of distinguished service, the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division, is hereby released from its assignment to the United States Army, Alaska. At this time, you will now witness the uncasing ceremony of the 1st Brigade 11th Airborne Division colors. As with the casing of colors, the ceremony of uncasing a unit's colors upon activation in a new capacity is deeply rooted in military tradition. When the cover is removed and the colors are unfurled, it signifies the acknowledgement of a unit's assumption of a new mission. As part of the United States Army 11th Airborne Division, the 1st Brigade 11th Airborne Division will become an essential part of forging the future of the Army's mission in the Arctic. At this time, Colonel Phillips and Command Sergeant Major Rose will uncase the unit's colors, signifying the activation of the 1st Brigade Combat Team of the 11th Airborne Division. The 1st Brigade Combat Team is hereby assigned to the United States Army's 11th Airborne Division. Ladies and gentlemen, you will now witness General McConville and Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston moving into position to conduct the patching ceremony, solidifying the activation of the 11th Airborne Division, Arctic. A unit's patch symbolizes its unique mission and is worn proudly by all soldiers assigned to that command. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in a round of applause for the 11th Airborne Division Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in a round of applause for the soldiers of the 11th Airborne Division. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Pastor Marvin Carroll, Mr. Ken Charlie, Ms. Rita Eaglehead, Mr. Sonny Luke, Mr. Keith Charlie, Mr. Travis Cole of the Golden Heart Fellowship will bless the 11th Airborne Division soldiers.
Amen. Amen. On behalf of the Native community, we'd like to welcome the new unit, a new commander, and pray Alaska will be good to you and you'll enjoy this place. So let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we can be here. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for each one of us. We thank you, Lord, that we can have salvation when we call upon you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the promise of eternal life. And Father, I just pray you'd bless this new unit, the new commander, Lord. I pray that you would give them wisdom and direction. Lord, we thank you for our military all across Alaska and all across the world, Lord. And Father, I just pray you'd protect our country and, and just watch over us, Lord, as you have for all these years. We just commit our lives to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you to be successful in all your endeavors. We bless your hands, your gifts, your work, and your abilities. We bless protection and provision for you and your families. We bless you to fear the Lord and to keep his commandments. We bless you to prosper and to be in good health. We bless you to know God and his love, which endures forever. And we bless you with the covering of our continued prayers and love and with the blood of the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. We bless that over you. Gegwadet naoli, God be with you. Hey, hey! Ah, hey, ah, hey! Uh, as a Alaska Native man from the village of Minto, I welcome you. You know, uh, you know, my dad told me stories about World War II. He fought in uh, ADAC. He said he was 42 years old when he got drafted, and uh, so everybody stepped up to the plate at that time. And at this time, I thank you guys for stepping up, and I pray that God would watch over and protect you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville. Well, good morning and what a beautiful and historic day it is today in Alaska. You know, I, I love the sound of helicopters in the morning because it sounds like victory, and that's what this division is about. It's about victory. And, and I'd like to begin by thanking our distinguished guests that are here today, Senator Murkowski, Senator Sullivan, and Mrs. Sullivan, and thank you, Senators, for all the support that you give to our soldiers and families. And to the local government and civilian leaders, what wonderful prayers, and thank you for your thoughts and prayers in support of this great organization that is here. Fellow Army leaders, teammates, our Army families, soldiers for life, and especially any veterans, our retirees from the 11th Airborne Division that are here watching. Every day is a great day to serve the United States Army because we serve with the world's greatest soldiers. Soldiers who are serving here in Alaska and soldiers who are protecting freedom all around the world. Today, June 6th, is a historic day for our Army. It was on this day 78 years ago that thousands of soldiers jumped into and stormed the beaches of Normandy, turning the tide for U.S. and allied forces and enabling them to restore freedom across Europe. And although the 11th Airborne Division didn't fight in Europe, it was their spirit of innovation in their testing and validation of airborne operations at the division level 
that gave General Eisenhower and the senior leaders the confidence to conduct airborne operations on D-Day that was responsible for their success. And every generation has its heroes. In our World War II heroes, the greatest generation established a legacy that we strive to live up to every single day. And on this June 6th, we are also making history. We are passing you the colors in the patch of the storied 11th Airborne Division, a division with an incredible history of valor in the Pacific during World War II, a division with a proud history of tactical innovation for airborne, air mobile, and air assault operations. In the Philippines during World War II, the 11th Airborne Division demonstrated uncommon valor while battling through the dense jungles and the rugged mountains of Leyte and Luzon and freed over 2,000 civilians in the famed raid on Los Banos. They earned a presidential unit citation and two congressional medals of honor. And not only did they validate division-level airborne operations leading to the successful execution of D-Day, in the early 1960s, they also became the 11th Air Assault Division, where they tested and refined air mobility and air assault operations. They introduced the first air assault badge, and their units merged to form the new 1st Air Cavalry Division that fought so heroically in Vietnam. As we present you the colors in the patch of the 11th Airborne Division, we have three expectations for you. We expect every soldier to live up to the heroic legacy of those in the 11th Airborne Division who have gone before you. We expect every soldier in this division to be masters of their craft in Arctic warfare, not just to survive, but to survive but to thrive in extreme cold weather and mountainous terrain. And we expect you to be innovative and on the leading edge in developing tactics, techniques, procedures, and equipment for this harsh Arctic environment. And whether you maneuver by helicopter or cold weather all-terrain vehicles, whether you wear a parachute or you wear skis, you are the 11th Airborne Division and wherever you go, you will be the most highly trained, disciplined, and fit Arctic warfighting unit in the world, ready to fight and win. That is what you will do. That is who you are. We are counting on you, the 11th Airborne Division. And one more thing, winning matters. Good luck and Godspeed on your next Rendezvous with Destiny Arctic Angels. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Brian S. Eifler, Commander of the 11th Airborne Division, Arctic. Good morning, Senator Murkowski, Senator and Mrs. Sullivan, General McConville, Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston, Lieutenant General Rainey, Sergeant Major Burzak, Lieutenant General Brunson, Sergeant Major Carnes, veterans of the 11th Airborne Division, family and friends, thank you all for being here on this historic day. I'd like to acknowledge that today's event is being held on the homelands of the Dana people whose knowledge of these lands has helped guide the Army's continued stewardship through consultation. We are grateful for our partnership with the indigenous people of Alaska, and I am honored that our Alaska Native leaders could join us today, so thank you. To the soldiers and staff who planned today's ceremony, who worked tirelessly behind the scenes, along with our great garrison team, thank you for this impressive event, and a special shout out to our coveted 9th Army Band today, you are the 11th Airborne Division Band. Who? Yeah.
And finally, to our soldiers that stand before you, the Arctic Angels standing in formation, you look phenomenal. You've, become, you've come a long way. The road you traveled has not been an easy one, but it has made you stronger. You have turned obstacles into opportunities and have overcome challenges that most cannot fathom. I am very proud of you, and there is nothing that you cannot do. Today is a visible commitment of the United States Army to defend our Arctic interest and reinvigorate our ability to operate in the harshest environment. It is a reassurance to our allies and partners across the Indo-Pacific, and it's a signal to our potential adversaries that we are focused and stand ready. Today, we unite mission, purpose, and identity. And our mission is to deter the threats and be ready to operate, fight, and win, both in Indo-Pacific and in the Arctic. And yes, that's a unique and difficult mission. But so were the missions of the angels that went before us. As the chief stated, we must live up to their heroic legacy. And much like the angels that validated the airborne and air assault divisions, we must do the same for the Arctic Division to test, develop, and inform our Army on the proper equipment, structure, and tactics to fight and win in the world's toughest environment. First to the 11th, Arctic Wolves, you will lead this effort. Your air assault into the ceremony today, by the way, how was that for an entry? That air assault, along with the Flying Dragons and Arctic attack, is a symbol of the future transformation that you will soon usher in. Change is hard. Leading change is harder. But I know you can do it. And as the Secretary of Defense stated, it's tougher on leaders here. And you should wear it like a badge and with pride. Our success as a division will be built on our soldiers, you in formation like those in the 17th CSSB, whose seven, or 13 subordinate commands artificially support the division across the vast Alaskan footprint. And on the leadership and professionalism of our officers and NCOs, like Lieutenant Al Wade, who exudes positivity, and Staff Sergeant Swope, who has an amazing story of overcoming the depths of despair, to turning his life around, and leading expeditions up Denali and helping others overcome all underpinned by our devoted civilians like Catherine Millen, Miller and the 1,200 civilians here at Wainwright. And of course, the dedicated family members and the most supportive communities I have ever known. We are strategically located to rapidly conduct operations across the Indo-Pacific and the Arctic and the Army's experts in extreme cold weather and mountainous terrain. That is our purpose and that is why we are here. Finally, our identity. We are the 11th Airborne Division, the Army's Masters of the Arctic and Mountain Warfare. Arctic Angels, this is who we are. We are a unique division with a unique mission, with unique capabilities in a strategic location, ready to fight and win across the Indo-Pacific and the Arctic, assuring our allies and partners, deterring adversaries, and making our nation safer and stronger. Sergeant Major and I, Sergeant Major Daly and I are very proud to be a part of this amazing team. Together we vow to give our best for you every day, 24-7, 365, to make sure we conduct tough training and are ready, no matter the mission, no matter the environment. So help me God. Arctic Six, Archangel Six on the net. Archangels, hua. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the 11th Airborne Division song and the Army song. Stand in the door, 
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, United States Senator Lisa Murkowski. <laughs> General McConville. Major General Eifler, Command Sergeant Major Daly, all of our distinguished guests, our veterans, our Arctic angels, and all who are gathered with us today, this truly is a momentous occasion. It is a glorious occasion. You have a new patch. It was beautiful noise to hear the peeling back and the slap on one another's shoulder and to see the smiles. You have a new patch, a new name, a new identity, and a reinvigorated mission. Soldiers here in Alaska have always, always been our nation's Arctic warriors, conquering mountains and valleys, training, training in the winter's bitterness, cold. You're our sentries of the north. You're Arctic tough, Arctic tough. But more than that, too, the Arctic wolves of the First Striker Brigade here at Fort Wainwright, the Spartans of the 425 at Fort Richardson, and all, all the other units under the U.S. Army Alaska umbrella have served in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kosovo, Veterans of these storied units now live in our communities, and some are still serving, including here in Alaska. Sparta lives, and the Arctic wolves remain. Your legacies will now become part of the 11th Airborne, our Arctic angels, which will reemerge as one of the world's most storied and elite fighting forces. As General McConnell has noted, there is no coincidence that today is D-Day, a monumental day in the history of our nation and a special one for those who don the airborne tab or wear the wings on their chest. As General Eisenhower wrote in part on that day, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. Your task 
is not an easy one. Good luck. And let us beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. So it is again 78 years later. I am so proud of you, your families, and the sacrifices you make on our behalf. You have my full support. Godspeed in your mission. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Senator Dan Sullivan. Well, I want to begin by thanking General McConville, Sergeant Major Grissom, Major General Eifler, Sergeant Major Daly, Alaska leaders from Fairbanks, North Pole, our native leaders, and most of all, all of you, the 11th Airborne Division, welcome home to Alaska. Now, this transformation of this unit to the 11th Airborne Division, now one of only two airborne divisions in the entire U.S. military, represents a transformation, a sea change, really, in the Pentagon's thinking about the Arctic and our Arctic strategy. It wasn't too long ago that the Department of Defense saw the Arctic as a backwater of strategic relevance, no real strategy, and a focus on shutting down bases and units here in Alaska. Now, all of that has changed. The standing up of the 11th Airborne Division here in Alaska represents a critical pillar of the transformation of America's Arctic strategy. I like to say that our great state, Alaska, constitutes three pillars of America's military might. With the 11th Airborne Division, all of you, we are a strategically located platform that can deploy thousands of tough airborne Arctic troops anywhere in the world on a moment's notice. We are the hub of air combat power for the entire Arctic and Indo-PACOM theaters. The Air Force just finished its bed down of two squadrons of F-35s here in the interior. We now have over 100 fifth generation fighters, F-22s and F-35s, based in Alaska. Nowhere in the world has that kind of fifth gen fighter power and we're the cornerstone of missile defense for our nation. All of the ground-based missile interceptors, the significant radar that we need is all based here. In addition, we're building icebreakers to protect our seaborne interests. We're building a strategic Arctic port in Nome to house and base these ships and large naval vessels. And we just stood up the Department of Defense, Ted Stevens Center, for Arctic Security Studies, which will be the premier place in the world to convene the best minds on Arctic strategy. So this is an incredible transformation on the Arctic, an exciting transformation. In the 11th Airborne, all of you are at the tip of the spear of this strategic transformation. Now, of course, not everybody is pleased by this. Just think about the military firepower I just described and the strategic location where it is. The brutal dictators in China, North Korea, and Russia are soon going to realize that the U.S. just put 105th generation fighters and a tough new airborne division in their rear and on their flanks. These dictators can't be happy about that, and that is a good thing. So let me conclude with this. In the Marines and Navy, we have a term for those fortunate enough to be part of a new unit like all of you are today. We call them plank holders. The term comes from the days of wooden ships in the Navy, where the original crew members had the ownership rights of the planks on the main deck when the ship was decommissioned. It is a great honor to be a plank holder. It is also a great honor 
to be part of a unit with the storied history of the 11th Airborne Division. And what a history. We just heard about it today. Amphibious invasions synchronized with air, airborne assaults and famous battles during World War II, daring behind the scene, behind the enemy lines raids to rescue thousands of POWs, two years of fighting in Korea, including airborne operations. What a legacy, and that legacy continues with all of you today. This is now your airborne division. The best thing about being a plank holder is that you get an opportunity that is very rare in the military that all of you now have. You get to set the culture, the toughness, the standards, the reputation of this new unit. It is a huge responsibility that starts for all of you today. And 40 years from now, when you're all retired and you're having a beer and your grandson or granddaughter comes to you and says excitingly, excitedly, Grandpa, guess what? I just got orders to the 11th Airborne Division in Alaska. It is considered the toughest Arctic trained unit, the toughest airborne unit, way tougher than the 82nd Airborne. <laughs> and they're all excited about that. You'll be able to sit back Smile confidently and say to your grandkid, I know it is, son, because I made it that way. Congrats again to all of you. Down from heaven comes 11. Welcome to Alaska. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's activation ceremony. You're invited to the reception on Ladd Army Parade Field. 